the shortest turnaround in NBA history for the Lakers and Heat. Two months later, the regular season begins in times we never experienced. 72 game season, pretty much the same amount as last season's playoff teams. How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. Plenty of drama, storylines, and breakout stars will unfold in the coming months. The Lakers consider heavy favorites. Giannis signs with the Bucks. James Harden trade rumors continues. But without further ado, here are my predictions for the 2020-21 NBA award. Starting with 6th man of the year, the Lakers signed the two candidates. Last season's winner, Montrezl Harrell put up over 18 points a game off the bench. Dennis Schroeder, 19 a game. Just absolutely loaded. I do believe Schroeder will start for the Lakers this season, so I won't count him in the top 5. Harrell, on the other hand, will have a strong case again. An energy guy off the bench finishes strong at the rim. Another guy, Jordan Clarkson, stellar addition for Utah last season, provided good minutes, has the ability to score and pick up the slack. Tyler Hero, another strong candidate, proved what he was capable of as a 20 year old in the playoffs, never afraid of the moment, looking every bit like a future all star. Spencer Dinwiddie of the Nets, who's great in late moments, will come off the bench for Kyrie Irving. Came off last season, averaged over 20 a game. His numbers will definitely go down back to his 2019 season, where he put up 17 a game. Gary Trent Jr. of the Portland Trailblazers, built for the moment, not afraid to score late in games, has the confidence, one of the breakout players in the bubble. And no, I did not put Luke Magic City Williams on the list. He was absolutely terrible in the Nuggets series, looked old, couldn't play defense, didn't deliver when his team needed somebody to stop the bleeding. He'll be 34, will still have his moments. I'm taking him off my top 5 list. I'm going with Tyler Hero. The kid has all the qualities to be a Miami Heat for life. Loved by Pat Riley and Jimmy Butler. Shot 39% from 3 last season. Don't be shocked to see a couple 40 point games from the soon to be 21 year old. Most improved player, last season Brandon Ingram, the slight edge over Bam Adebayo, but I'm okay with B.I. having career numbers. This season's candidates, Michael Porter Jr. of the Denver Nuggets, Jerry and Graham walked away in free agency. Detroit paid him $60 million. While Porter proved what he was capable of in limited minutes, likely be the starter, hit big time shots in the playoffs, played in crucial moments, has the ability to score 30 plus on any given night, a nightmare on the glass. When you fall asleep, he will box out and score easy layups out of nowhere, give his team extra opportunities. We could be seeing a 20 point season from the former best high school prospect. DeAndre Ayton of the Phoenix Suns, the most forgotten number one pick in recent times, never gets talked about, having one of the best floor generals all time Chris Paul will give DA plenty of opportunities inside making him more effective played just 38 games last season if Aiton can average 23 and 13 Phoenix might have three all-stars Marvin Bagley another forgotten lottery pick drafted ahead of Luka the biggest travesty in the 2018 draft so far now forgotten an awful second season always gets injured and can't seem to catch a break average just 14 and 7 in year 2 not good enough for a second overall pick played just 13 games will need to stay healthy. I can see big improvements on a team that will likely fail to make the playoffs again. If Sacramento wants to be relevant, Bagley needs to be the second option. Perhaps he can figure it out and put up around 18 and 9. I wouldn't bet on it. OG and Anobi of the Toronto Raptors, huge in the rotation. Now with Abaka and Gasol gone, the small forward needs to step up even more. One of the main reasons why Toronto was so successful in 2020, OG started 68 of 69 games, averaged 10 and a half points over 5 rebounds, hounded that everybody on D will have more opportunities to score. A much improved outside shooter can also run the floor and finish around the rim. I can see him average over 15 a game, become one of the best non-all-star small forwards in the East. Larry Markadon, who's playing for a contract year, banged up last season, regressed it, and seemed lost. Put up under 15 points, numbers worse than his rookie year. Now that Jim Boylan's gone, I do believe Markadon's more than capable of becoming a 20-point scorer. Needs to re-establish his confidence back. A dark horse team to sneak into the playoffs but I'm going with OG and Anobi just like teammate Siakam two seasons ago the Raptors have one of the best development staff nobody imagined how great Fred Van Vliet was gonna be Kyle Lowry wasn't relevant until he joined the Raptors and now a Hall of Famer one of the best organizations in the league many star players should highly consider going because of the culture and front office Kawhi Leonard leaving the franchise might be the biggest absolute travesty of his career coach of the year Frank Vogel whose Lakers will likely have to number one seed has done a heck of a job keeping all the guys happy and deserves a lot of credit for making the team work in every way. Steve Nash of the Nets with two of the top 10 talents on his roster. His basketball genius should allow him to become one of the best coaches right away. As a player, Nash is the smartest I have ever seen. As long as he keeps Kyrie under control and Kyrie has respect for him, things should go well for Brooklyn.
Brooklyn. We know Kevin Durant and Nash has a strong relationship. The Nets should be one of the top seats in the East. Monty Williams of the Phoenix Suns, if he leads the franchise to the playoffs, will end the 10-year drought. Players have deep respect for him. Having veterans, solid guys, and a young core, Phoenix will be dangerous for every team on any given night. Rick Carlisle of the Dallas Mavericks, without a doubt a playoff team with Luka as the franchise star. The roster's not very talented, but Carlisle's a coach that makes good adjustments. The team will score plenty of points. Of course, Brad Stevens' name will always be up there. Boston will win plenty of games as well, but Stevens hasn't gotten to the finals yet and seems to underachieve in the playoffs. I'm going with Steve Nash over Monty Williams on this one. Brooklyn will score a lot of points. He'll be able to figure out all the pieces and utilize his guys with his Phoenix Sun staff. His basketball vision I will never question. His hoops IQ second to none. For Rookie of the Year, very intriguing nonetheless. Anthony Edwards, James Wiseman, LaMelo Ball, top three picks needs to be there. Bobo remains eligible since the awards were voted before the bubble, looking very sharp and dangerous as a 7-2 outside shooter, and I'll draw in Killian Hayes of the Detroit Pistons in there. While Edwards and Wiseman both role players on their teams, Bo Bo's a role player on Denver, and Killian Hayes a role player on Detroit. So I'm going with LaMelo Ball, a 6'8 point forward, an excellent passer, shows zero fear, might be the best thing to ever happen to the Charlotte franchise, has all the green light to do what he wants. Don't be surprised to see the 19 year old put up around 16, 6, and 7. Defensive player of the year, Giannis wanted over AD last season. The two will be up there again for this year. Bam Adebayo, phenomenal, can guard 1 to 5. Joel Embiid, a deadly big for the Sixers. I expect a hungrier season for the center. Rudy Gobert with his presence up there as well. This time, I'm going with Anthony Davis, who I believe should have wanted the award last season. The Lakers went from no playoffs to champions. AD, a monster in the paint, hustles and makes all the winning plays. Teams panic every time he's guarding them. There's no doubt the Lakers will be a top three seed in the NBA at the very least when everyone's healthy. Giannis should have voting fatigue. Kawhi Leonard's Clippers aren't good on defense. And Ty Lue's not a good defensive coach and beats injury prone. Five candidates for MVP. LeBron James, even in year 18, the 2020 Finals MVP, on the best team in the league, he loves to get his numbers. Despite the Lakers roster being loaded, will still play around 34 to 36 minutes a game. Giannis of course looking for 3 straight regular season MVPs, the last player to do so, Larry Bird. But I doubt his numbers will get that much better compared to last season, where he averaged nearly 30 and 14 in limited minutes. Honestly, one of the most underrated regular season MVPs all time, he just needs to focus playing better in the playoffs, develop of a post game that would be useful against high quality teams. Luka Doncic of the Dallas Mavericks, the 21 year old phenom will be the best player in the NBA very soon, mark my words, might have the most triple doubles all time before turning 28 years old at this rate, does everything for the Mavs, makes everybody around him better, average over 30 a game his first playoff series. If Dallas gets a top 4 seed, I expect Luka to get votes, Kevin Durant of the Brooklyn Nets, despite coming back from an Achilles injury, Durant's still one of the best players in the league, his game flawless when scoring the ball, still can easily drop 30 points on any given night, unstoppable moves at near 7 feet tall, looked sharp in preseason despite that long layoff, now at 32 years old, he's still a lot quicker offensively than Dirk Nowitzki ever was, Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets up there too, last regular season wasn't so great, but in the playoffs an absolute animal, the best player in the Clippers series, had some moments back and forth with Anthony Davis, Denver very well can become the number one seed, I know I'm gonna get a lot of complaints why isn't Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard, or James Harden on this list? Yes, any of these guys outside my list can win the award, even Damian Lillard or Anthony Davis, but Golden State not the same without Klay Thompson. Curry doesn't have the body to carry a franchise without another star on his team, just three games into last season, got injured, I believe he'll wear down this season, and Harden, with all the drama demanding a trade, unexcusable attitude, he's simply not a leader, and cares more about his stats and scoring than championships. One thing's for certain, he'll never win a championship in Houston, Kawhi Leonard too much low management, the Lakers will have AD the best player some nights which will hurt James's chances, voter fatigue for Giannis unless he averages 33, 15, and 7 which I doubt, so I'm going with Luka Doncic who will become the youngest MVP all time at 22 years old in the 2021 season, Dallas already a real dread, last season's playoffs Doncic absolutely destroyed, abused, annihilated, and humiliated the Clippers, Marcus cheap shot Morris, and my 
Montrez played like a mess Harold, tried to insult Luka, but he destroyed both of them anyway, also made Reggie Jackson look like the worst player in the NBA. Now he will have James Johnson to intimidate the opposing team's big tough guys. Doncic will end up being the best European player all time when it's said and done. Already a basketball hall of famer in my book, I predict he'll average 30 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists. As for stat scoring leaders, I'm going with Giannis at 31.5 points a game. He'll be even more dominant and improve on the post, continue to get easy dunks in the regular season, put up Kareem-like early 70s Bucks numbers, Luka Doncic at number 2, 30 points a game, him and Giannis will be the two best players very soon, will even surpass James Harden as an overall player next season, can do everything. James Harden at 29 and a half points. I don't believe he'll play as well this season. With all the distractions, negativity, disrespecting Coach Silas, will eventually be traded. But Houston's not a bad team with John Wall. There will be times Harden's body language will just not be there. I'm predicting 29 and a half points for the beard. Still great numbers, of course. Damian Lillard at 28 and a half points will have hot moments here and there. Steph Curry 28 a game without Clay will score plenty. Rebound leaders Andre Drummond obviously again at 15 boards will still play for a stinky team. The best rebounder this generation. Giannis at near 14 a game. Rudy Gobert, Click Capella, and Demonis Sabonis around 13 onto assists. I'm going with Trey Young number one. Now the Hawks have shooters and better players. His dishing numbers will happen more frequently. 10.8 times I'm predicting. Luka Doncic at 9.4 assists would have averaged around that number if it wasn't for early injuries in the first quarter. LeBron James at 3, 9.3 dimes. Ben Simmons, 9 assists. Daryl Morey added more outside shooters. And Chris Paul, 8.3 assists. Steals, I'm going with Ben Simmons, 1 at 2.3 a game. Marcus Mark, 2.1. Chris Dunn, 2. And Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, 1.9. Blocks, Mitchell Robinson of the Knicks, nearly 3 a game, will play tremendous defense under Coach Tips. Hassan Whiteside, over 2.5. Anthony Davis 2.5, Christos Porzingis and Rudy Gobert 2.3. Once again, my 2020-21 NBA awards predictions, Luka Doncic MVP, Anthony Davis Defensive Player of the Year, LaMelo Ball Rookie of the Year, Tyler Hero Sixth Man, Steve Nash Coach of the Year, and OG Ananobi Most Improved Player. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more content, more good stuff coming soon. I love all of you. See you next time.